up on the bridge. Why are you, uh, why are you killing yourself? Because life sucks sometimes, you know? And I've been here before, I come here often to like think, and I regret the moment that I haven't jumped earlier. What do you got, you got a job? Yeah, of course. And you've got a wife. Yeah. Is she nice? She's all right. Not great. Hello? Hmm. Well, I guess he jumped. Hello? Oh, I thought you jumped. Hello? Hello? Oh, boy. Hello? What a time to have breakup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what happened? What a time to have your phone go kaput. <laughs> my battery's running low. Oh. oh so man. am I, so... No, 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 no. Just relax. You have kids? Yeah. Oh. oh man. I might join you, so don't let me think about it for a second. I'm sick of living, too. Well, in general, tell me what it is about life that really sucks to, you know, enough to get you on well, the air. Well, first of, of all, Tom Fasano yesterday says to me <laughs> that, oh, oh, you're asking this guy? I didn't mean you. Oh, oh, oh I'm Someone sorry. Someone pulled over. Someone pulled over? Yeah. Let me talk to the guy. You, it's a, I think it's a female. Ooh, oh, wait hey, a second. Life's looking up. Hey, yeah. man, you can meet a girl. That'll keep you alive. <laughs> Right, let me talk to you. Right. Talk to you. Hello? Howard, I heard you talking. Yes. I'm a passerby. He's serious. Oh, he is? All I'm right, then let me... I'm blocking traffic. I'm here with him. All right, let me talk him down. Wait one minute. All right, he give me that phone. I'm a out. professional. <clears throat> Uh-oh, what do I say? He's not on the side of the bridge where he could jump. He's still, like, sort of walking around. Yeah. All right. You're not, like, right over the edge of the bridge yet where you could jump. You're, like, on the side where people walk, right? Of course. Right. Well, how would I speak with if I'm on the side? All right. You think she's going to come out here and join me? Thank you for your cool. How is she? Is she nice looking? Nah. No good? Fat cow. Big oh. fat cow? Oh, yeah. look at you. <laughs> look at terrible. Stop. Woman pulled over to help you. You call her a fat cow. <laughs> I'm all right. Well, Stop. you got kids. Listen, I always look at it this way. Yeah. I, uh, listen. There have been times in my life where I've looked Everyone at... Everyone is hopping, Howard. Good. I'll be okay. You're going to be all right? I'm talking to her. No, everyone's stopping. Now there's going to be traffic here. I don't want don't no accident. Don't stop. Keep going. Well, that's good that they're stopping. What? Nah. I don't know. <laughs> oh, boy. That's how I met Robin. I was on a bridge. <laughs> Listen to me. What's what? your first name? Give me a name. I'm known by Prince. What's up? All right, your name is Prince, or are you formerly known as Prince? Yes, there you go. All right, you are Prince? Yeah. Listen, Prince, let me tell you something. Yeah. You see me? Yeah. You haven't jumped yet. I, if, let me tell you something. You might think so, life's a bed of roses for right. me or someone like that, but it's not. You gotta wait till my book comes out. How yeah, you got, let me tell you what you got to look forward to. You ready, Prince? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Robin's book. Right. I've got a couple of things planned, um, movie-wise. Yeah. And sure. I'm telling you, I've got. I'm going to revolutionize the way you look yeah. at entertainment. Yeah, you're not gonna uh -huh. see Howard's movie. And if you had any, you got any interest? Like, what? are you interested in anything? Now the cops are here. <laughs> well, so what? Ignore that. Uh, if we, if you got turned on to anything in life, or you had a little hobby or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right? So plenty. There are exciting things happening. You right. know what? You really ought to come to visit us. Yeah. Before yeah. you do this. Yeah, why don't you come and visit us? I'd love to. Oh, and by the way, first of all, let me thank you for calling in. I've always wanted to help someone who was about to jump yeah. from a bridge. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. You won't come down to the studio? What? I work nights. That would be impossible. You can get to the you bridge know, at this time, but you can't get to the show. No, because today that's it. You know what I'm saying? What is it, Fafa Foley? Dominic Barber just called and just asked the guy Hi. one favor. What? Could he say before he dies that Dominic is his Alex. lawyer and Alex. the bridge is unsafe? Yeah, hello? Yeah, the, yeah this is, uh, I'm a friend of yours, by the way. Uh, the police are here. They got him in uh, handcuffs now. They got him in handcuffs? Good. Yeah, that's all I was doing. Oh, Once again, I yes. kept him on the line until he jumped. You did. I was listening. And yeah, I I'm good. And the lady stopped and we got him. Oh, I'm a hero. <laughs> Call the hero. newspapers, uh, Gary. <laughs> Yeah. Call the newspapers Put immediately. The Tomorrow's headline. Actually, Tomorrow's headline. Actually, Howard Stern saves right, jumper. Hey, who is this? Hello? Is this? Take care. Hey, let me police? talk to you. Let me talk to you. Don't what? don't disconnect the line. Okay. Well, okay, tell me what's going on now. Uh, the police are taking him into the car. Let me talk to the cops. Uh, I don't think he really wants to talk. Yeah, yeah, the cops are asking me to hang out here. Yeah, I'm a witness. Let me talk to the cops. <laughs> Quickly, this is my moment. I've been waiting 20 you know, years for this. Be we begged people yeah, to turn themselves in. Howard, call I, us at this I'm moment. a fat woman. I put my arms around him and held on for life. Did you? Yeah. Oh, oh this is the fat bro. Hey, listen, let me tell you something. Yeah. I am a hero, aren't I? You are a hero. Yeah. I put my arms about that guy, put a, a grip vice until the police came. They handcuffed him. Oh, what? No kidding. They, but they're taking him away. Hey, honey, don't try to steal my thunder. I am oh, the guy who kept him on the phone. Howard, you're our savior. Yeah, now let me tell you how I work this, Robin. <laughs> Through humor. 
Yes. You know, I threw in a little bit of uh, some cone, some 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 cone palm. What is that called? Corn, corn. corn palm. I threw in a little bit of homey I wish, humor. I wish you knew what it was when you're throwing. If you it. noticed, I kept the guy laughing every once in a while. You know what? He, he told me he loves you. He said you were the only reason. And I'm glad he talked about the helicopter because that's how I spotted him. Yes. And then the other guy. We have traffic blocked. There are six police cars here. You know what I would love? A photo op with me and the wife and the kids who are now not fatherless because I stepped in. Now They're that's so a happy. beautiful it's shot. Officer, De, Officer De Jesus said to you, Jesus. Howard. No, that's the Jesus, honey. <laughs> but you're right, it is the Jesus. We shouldn't be forced to learn those names. I'm with you that's on that. Funny. Howard, thank yes. you very much. Let me talk to Officer De Jesus. Wait. <laughs> Howard, how you doing? Officer, how are you? Okay, thanks for hey, by the for a while. You know, we were on our way. We were listening to you on the radio and we just started uh, flying over to the bridge and pick them up. By the way, officer, would you consider me a hero? You're definitely a hero. Is there some kind of citation that you give to citizens who do things like this? When someone does a heroic act like me, who talks people down from a bridge, can I receive a special citation from the mayor? Hello? Hello? Yes. I'm saying. I hate these cell phones. Officer De Jesus. Howard. Officer De Jesus. Howard. Yes. Howard. Yes. How you doing? How you doing? You got it stopped. Who is this? Oh, this is the guy, the guy that pulled over. And yeah, let me ask you jumping. something. Ask the cops if I'm uh, eligible for some sort of, uh, you know, citation. Some citation. <laughs> hey, Howard, guess what? I'm a friend of Celeste. Oh, you Does are that a friend. Does that make me eligible to be on your show? <laughs> what? Does that make me eligible to be on your show? Yeah, or my mother you? went to school together. Could you climb over that little railing? Yeah. What about <laughs> you jumping? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, would you jump off the bridge and kill yourself? Uh, not today. Not today? No. There's some people who... The people you want to kill themselves yeah. won't. <laughs> Let me speak to that officer, De Jesus. Uh, he's busy taking our information. There's about 400 cops here and rescue people and everybody else. Ask the cops if there's any chance for financial re, uh, remuneration, <laughs> remuneration for a hero. Hold on. Hey, don't keep that guy's phone either. <laughs> That's my phone. <laughs> Howard. Yes. Who is this? Good job. Who is this? Uh, it's uh, a police officer from the 3-3 three -three Yes. Let me say something, officer. Thank you for stepping in. What I tried to do, officer, was... I, I'm trying to give my statement, please. Uh, <laughs> what I am trying to say is I kept this gentleman on the phone. I knew what to do. Yeah, we knew what you were doing. We were listening and getting here as fast as we could. Exactly. By, en Howard. by engaging him in conversation, I saved another human's life. This is my Christmas present to all of the world. Yeah. Saving human life. Well, you did a good job. Am I eligible for some sort Can the officers come down here and take pictures with me if I set up a photo opportunity? Well, I tell you what, when you get off today, yes. why don't you come up to the 3 3? Yes. Uh, uh, and, 165th uh, in Amsterdam. And try to get this guy's wife and kids to stand next to me in the picture with the mayor. You're going to go to 165th in Amsterdam? No, not in your life. <laughs> oh, come on. There's hey, a lot of cops there. Let me say something. We need more cops like you. Well, no. Well, we need more concerned uh, citizens like you. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Exactly. And I'll expect that citation, officer. Hi, tell everybody how I handled it. Talk about the professionalism that I employed. Go ahead. Oh, uh, you were the best. You're out there. You kept this guy on the phone. He's a short right. young man. All right. And you kept him on the phone until we got there. Exactly. So that's what we need. Some more... Uh, citizen involvement just to get people to uh, be safe out there. Have you ever seen another individual act so calm during a crisis like this? Oh, <laughs> uh, no. That, you see, that goes to show what kind of a, a humanitarian you are. Thank you, officer. We would encourage all people who are considering this to call us first. Yes. Now, you have the man under uh, under uh, house arrest? Uh, well, what <laughs> is, what's going to happen is we're going to take him for some psychiatric evaluation. The Port Authority Police Department is handling the whole... Uh, incident. Excellent. Now, uh, has she... Do you think you ought to visit the man and have your picture taken yes. with Yes. Now, what do you think of that? Do you think I should go down and visit with him and bring photographers with me or wait for the photographers to come up here with the family? <laughs> what is well, it? Uh, I'm not sure what you want, you know, it's up to you what you want to do, really. Yes. Well, I tell you what, officer, I need to know what hospital he'll be in in case I want to uh, have a photo opportunity. Right, one second. Gary, get the New York Post on the phone right, in the Daily second. News. It's a little loud up here. we got a lot of going on. Hold on. Roy, tell, tell me what's going on, officer, quickly. Uh, Hand well, the right, phone. Right now, we're, we're talking with the woman who stopped. Yes. And her name is Helen Marie Trimble. Yes, Helen. And that is the woman that stopped here. And she to uh, help out and actually spoke to you on the phone. Hey, hey, she's no hero. I'm the hero. No, yes, that's correct. Right. I that's kept him on the phone. I didn't really need her help. You got there first. Yeah, I got that's, there first. I don't correct. want her you getting... You got there first. Hey, let me talk to her. 
Hold on for a second. She's trying to steal your thunder. If there's reporters down there, I'm going to shoot myself. You're wonderful. Yeah, and I I do not, Helen, I do not want to read in the paper that you somehow stopped him from jumping. He was not jumping. I kept him from jumping. He told me he was going to jump. You helped him, Howard. Yeah, don't hang around there trying to get my credit. Don't you have to eat breakfast or something, Helen? I didn't stop him, Howard. You did. Well, exactly. I mean, That's it what was... you're supposed to say in all the interviews. Right. Howard did it, not you. Oh, no. Howard, you did. Right. I was just I was just uh, an extension of you. That's all I was Thank with you. me. You were, the, you were the mentality. No, you were not the even most... the extension of me. You know what? Because she's going to get to the reporters. Yeah. You have to tell her that she has to say your name in every answer to every question. Yeah, okay. Well, Commissioner, Patak, Commissioner Stern was responsible for this. You're damn right. It's a good thing I'm a part of the Pataki administration. This <laughs> only looks good for my you, governor. Howard, you should see what you did to traffic here. <laughs> yeah, and let me tell you something. Yeah, commission of, uh, Commissioner of Traffic, what are you doing? <laughs> Helen, what are you wearing for the photo opportunity? Oh, I'm just wearing just a, a skirt and a blouse. Yeah, well, that was brave of you because he could have taken you and thrown you right off That's the bridge. True. I know he could have. But, yeah. Howard, I knew that you, you did a great job. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to tell everybody what you did. Oh, I know she's going to get all the credit. I know the press will give me no credit. Her picture's is going to be everywhere. Oh, um, yes. Uh, Lieutenant Bleeker would like to talk oh, to you. This is the man. Let me okay. speak to Lieutenant Bleeker. Just, Shh, Robin, be quiet. I'm sorry. Just a minute. <laughs> I don't get any credit. Here is my I was citation. To the guy too. A hero. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Yes. Uh, Howard, this is uh, Lieutenant Bleeker, the Port Authority Police Department. Lieutenant, Good first of all, let me welcome you to the show, and uh, I appreciate you uh, being with us during this particular crisis that I've just finished handling. Well, we wanted to thank you very much for helping avert a tragedy on the bridge. Think nothing of it, officer. I must tell you that I consider myself a law-abiding citizen. I consider myself a hero now. And it's all in a day's work. It's all in a day's work. I don't, I, well, I don't consider myself a hero. <laughs> That's right. Right. I don't consider myself a hero. Hey, Lieutenant, have you ever seen anybody handle a crisis in this, and in, in, with such calm and, and such uh, professionalism? Well, certainly not over the landline or cellular line at the right. time while the event was actually transpiring. Uh, and you? that wasn't even a good connection. Yes, and that was not a good connection. I was working with adversity. <laughs> Let me yes. say something, Lieutenant. Uh, my audience wants to know what's going on now. Where is the uh, man that I saved? Uh, you know, where is the man I saved? The man that you spoke with is in Port Authority Police custody at this time. I see, and he will be brought to a hospital? Yes, uh, we're going to have a psychological examination uh, of the individual uh, taken so that we know his state of mind and his uh, physical condition. Well, if you need me to testify in any way or to uh, add to the... Uh, to. Uh to what, Robin? You want to give him an award. If you want to give yeah. me an award. If you want to give me an award, I'm available. And uh, certainly to pose with the family, I would do that. Well, we appreciate it. I'll have my officers uh, from the Port Authority contact your office. We did want to thank you very much for talking them down during a very tense situation. Thank you, Lieutenant. And uh, as a uh, Howard Stern fan over the years, I uh, did appreciate the way that uh, you handle yourself. Thank you very much. I uh, felt some pressure there, but I came through beautifully. Were you scared at any moment? Um, well, Robin, that's an interesting question. Lieutenant, uh, as you know, in a crisis situation, uh, many people do panic. i got to tell you something. While I was nervous, I kept my head about me. <laughs> And I, I kind of feel like I've set a good example for the children of America. Thank you. Well, Nothing throws me. Right. Well, we do want to thank you for resolving what could have been a tragic situation. We do have the gentleman here with us. And as I did say, we're going to have him examined for... Uh, hey, put the, fo put the phone on him. I want him to thank me personally. Well, I'm sorry. Feel like that. The, the traffic is such that we don't have an opportunity to do that, but uh, we did want to thank you very much for uh, resolving what could have been a very serious situation well, at the Lieutenant, moment. Lieutenant, you could offer the doctors this little piece to help the man in his recovery. As soon as he is much better, we'd love to have him on the show. Yes, well, yes. That will give him something to live for. I am willing to do that. Okay. Well, we do thank you, and we'll certainly pass it along to the physician. And, Lieutenant, watch those trucks. It's very dangerous yeah, out there. it sounds very bad. <laughs> it sounds like a real mess. <laughs> well, we do thank you very much for your help, and uh, we'll look forward to speaking with you in the future. Lieutenant, any time the police need me, I am there. Thank you. Remember that. Okay. Maybe they ought to i got to tell you something. The guy was so annoying, at one point I was going to tell him to jump. <laughs> but, uh, all right. What? Maybe they ought to put our number right there at the bridge. Can you put my number at the bridge? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank right, you, Lieutenant. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> that was Lieutenant... Uh, Bleeker, I think. Bleeker, uh, accomplished man who has just uh, called me a hero.
and I am embarrassed to be see, called a I hero. I see in the future that there will be some photo opportunities with no. a citation or something from the Port Authority police. Let's see. Who should we call first? The, the, you can't even call because they're already calling us. All right. Now, let me, all right, tell me who was on the phone. CBS TV already called. Go ahead. They, they said, did Howard just talk a guy off the bridge? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Go ahead. Um, and John's been getting a lot of phone calls. I think the Post called, a couple of papers called. All right. I will need to immediately set up uh, press opportunity. In, in the meantime, you know who's out in our green room? Who? Who's thoroughly impressed with you. Yes. Actress Sally Kellerman. She walked in. She goes, <clears> did Howard talk that man off the bridge? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, this is a good opportunity, mm. isn't it, Howard? You never thought Your chest being got a hero huge, How she look? Could she looks great. Well. Does she? Yeah. She I looks bet really you I could get the third base with her. <laughs> now that you're a hero? Yeah, she'll want to kiss me. <laughs> she looks really good. Does she? I always had the hearts for her. I love that voice. She's Hello. Like, that's so I'm Sally Kellerman. <laughs> <sighs> Well, wait a minute now. Is there anybody you want to give an exclusive interview to about this whole situation? Yeah, Sally Kellerman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now hold on a second. we got to say, do this right. You're, no, you're right. You're right. Uh, hey, Sally's press savvy. Yeah. Well, maybe yeah, we want to discuss this with her. Because well, you, uh, she can be in on the interview. Let me maybe just say maybe one of the ways to go is to announce, you know, because what will happen is we're going to start getting a lot of calls. Maybe you can announce that at 9... 15 or 9.30 this morning, you will hmm. allow limited press access to the studio okay, yes. to comment on it. Now I will make a... Uh, be, you know be quiet, Penny Baba Crone Billy. will be through the door in yeah, 10 right. seconds. Yeah, Penny Crone. <laughs> she's, she's sliding down the fire pole right now. All right, what I would like to do, uh, the press is already contacting us, so uh, obviously the amount of press is overwhelming <laughs> at this point. Because Sally is going to be here, Sally Kellerman, mm -hmm. uh, I must interview her. What is she plugging? Uh, she got a new movie. Oh, is that right? Yes. Is she? What is she in? The, that Robert, Robert Altman? I can't pronounce it. Prince of Good to see. Good to see. I'm glad she's not on the balls of her ass. <laughs> oh. I like her. She she's should a, never be on the balls of her ass. She was great in that ass. movie with Rodney. Uh, back to oh, school. Back to school I watched, yes. I've watched that 500 times. And you know she's an Academy Award nominee. Oh, for big Mash. deal. Big deal. So, I'm a hero. <laughs> Don't yeah, try to steal my important, thunder. Being nominated for the Academy Award or saving a life? <laughs> All right, here's how I want to handle the press. <clears throat> I, I just want to say I use my medical background to oh, help assist. Oh, sit back. <laughs> just sit back. Weren't you the one who asked him? I talked the guy down. All right, here's the way it's going to be work. I'll give you credit at the press conference. Yeah. What, was there Don't a, embarrass me at the press conference. Was there a soul in this room that believed he was telling the truth till somebody picked up the phone? No, I listen, I knew to treat it seriously. I thought that was him honking his own horn. Exactly. All right, here we go. If Jackie had gotten a phone, here's what I want to say. Gone by now. You, you think you, you think you can get Lieutenant? <laughs> what was that? You haven't got the balls. <laughs> can you get Jeff. Lieutenant Bleeker down here for the press uh, conference? We need it. We need some sort of officer. Yeah, somebody in a uniform. Yeah, get, see if Lieutenant Bleeker will call you back. We got to get him down here with those other officers who were first on the scene. The, what was the guy, Sergeant De Jesus or something? Yeah, and get Helen down here too. <laughs> It'll give De me Jesus. an opportunity to look humble to the press. In other words, I'll look like a guy who, you know, I want to give credit where, you know, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be humble, yeah. Robin. Now here's how it's gonna work. Uh, the press the mayor would like to congratulate. Nah, come on, listen, let's be serious. I want to get, I want to, I want to. We're at the press conference. You got the clout. You're the one who has to call me a hero, and oh. then I'm gonna say, oh please, I am not a hero. I did what I had to do. I stepped forward as any good citizen would do. The fact that I acted calmly, the fact that I kept my head about me, the fact that blah, 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 blah. And let, but you keep I calling me a hero. I did what any okay. other person would right, do. Right, right. Howard, you know, we're getting... But be persistent. I will. No you matter what I... You are a hero, Howard. No, no matter how much I deny you it. You are. Right. I'm sorry. Thank You're you. a hero. Just get uh, used to it. All right, you got the part. Right. You know what else we ought yeah. to do? I can act, Jackie. We're getting a lot of requests <laughs> for... Um, if Jackie had to do it, it'd be like, You are a hero. You're not okay. Okay. Oh, you don't want me to say anything? Okay. <laughs> We're getting a lot of requests for the tape, copy of the tape. Uh, Maybe we ought to get a little boom box, and you know how you sit there and play the tape, like I, a 911 call? Yes, yes. Well, you'll play. You, I shouldn't be in the room when you play the tape. You can play the tape for the press ahead of time, and then I'll be introduced. Ooh. And then you'll right. say, and now the man who is a hero, and I'll go, please, first of all, I'm being called a hero uh, by Gary and other I people. I, I'm not a hero. I'm not We're a hero. All heroes in the right circumstances. Right. I'll be like Kathy Lee Gifford. You, Robin, then chime in and go, Howard, Howard I believe you are a hero. That and was I'll say, incredible. Right. Of course you're a hero. All right. Get pictures of Lindbergh, FDR, Lincoln. Put them up behind me. I'm serious. Stage Probably this whole thing. I want this beautiful for tonight's news. This is what I've been waiting for. This is going to turn around my whole image. People are going to see me in a whole new light. No one can say anything bad about a hero.
Uh, we'll see. <laughs> I'll wait till you see how they could figure it out with you. They should always Where's win. Ralph? Where's Ralph? My hair has to be done. Immediately. And does he have something for you to wear? Are you in the right outfit? Ralph, go out and buy me a jacket. A Superman outfit. <laughs> yeah, buy me a Superman outfit. <laughs> Ralph, quickly, go get a Superman outfit. Big H. <laughs> I, I know I'll ruin this by doing something stupid. Right. What do you want, man? Do you think I should wear a Superman outfit? No. No. No, you no play it straight? You look you're being I look humble. Good? Humble Do you joke. think I look good? How's my hair? So fix it up. I'll fix it up a little bit first. All right, let's call the press conference for 930. All right. Because we got to give the press an hour to get down yeah. here. Yeah, everybody's calling. That's why I'm Who here. else is calling? Quickly tell we're, we're, me. Well, Channel 11 wants to bring, what, what Michelle Lee, whatever. Uh, <laughs> the Chinese girl? Yeah, Caroline, uh, I mean, from uh, from Extra, wants to come down. Every, every, you know, oh, Extra, Extra, Extra. Called. Extra, that's a good show. Yeah, she wants to come down. She was just... Oh, don't block my camera, you retard. Sorry. Ralph is Sorry, right. Hero Stern. Yeah, go ahead. Anyway, so so you want me to just tell him to come down at 9.30, or you want to talk to any of them now? And hmm. Should I give anybody exclusive? No, I think I should save it for the press conference. Are they coming with cameras? Well, they, you want cameras, right? Yeah, I want cameras. Yeah. Can they get here in an hour? Uh, I could find that out. All right, find out. Find out how much... Pr- I don't want to be sure embarrassed. They can. If I hold a press conference, people got to be here. <laughs> okay, so tell them there's coffee and donuts. Hmm. Lie, yes. Find out who's available to come to a press conference in an hour. If not, I'm, not, I'm only going to give an exclusive to one or two people. Okay. All right. Well, who's Quickly, the- somebody find things out. Somebody organize. Yeah, all right. that, that, w- that was great. That was amazing. Yeah. Of course it was amazing. Unbelievable. I saved people's lives. Get out of here. First he makes people jump, and then he saves them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Ralph. He's looking at me differently now. I'm telling you, this has turned around my whole image. But Jackie's perfectly right. You did save Ralph's life already. <laughs> yeah. He's not shy. Yeah, Ralph would have been on the, he in the Bowery. Be <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. Okay, let me take a break. That was kind of exciting. Of wasn't course, it? Robin. I don't even. You know, it's taking time to sink in. Yes. Yeah. That I'm a man, new man. Life was actually saved yeah. actually by different. you. And the guy had kids and a, and a wife. That's true. We should find out and give them a call. Hmm. It could have so easily gone the other way because at first I thought it was a fake call. I was going to tell the guy to jump and hang up on him. <laughs> Thank God I hung in there. This is the Magic. best Christmas ever. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> if he had jumped, you'd have gotten the chair. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, they would have so hauled me into court. Home, I would have said, I'll make an exception. Death Ooh, I'm a hero. I'm a hero. Yes. All right, all right. Everybody calm down. All right. I'm going to take a break. We're going to set up the press opportunity. See, you're already saying you're a hero way too much. Are you going to No, no, no. Don't worry. Wait till the cameras are on. Watch me. (laughs) Just watch. You want to see acting? Can you weep? Can you weep? I'll be quiet. (laughs) Weep, 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 weep. (laughs) Weep, 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 weep. weep. (laughs) I did what I had to do. (laughs) All right. This is a big moment. We have to we have to make sure that everything is in place for the big moment. That's right. We don't get this opportunity often. All right. Let's take a break. Everyone calm down. Obviously, this is great. You know what? This, this will be even, making the news. This will be on the wire. This could even make the FCC turn around, make atten- pay attention. Yeah. Hey, maybe he's a dick and he says vagina way too much, but he did save a guy's That's life. That's socially redeeming, right there. That's all you need to do. I bet you when Sally Kellerman walks in, she's going to be all over me like a oh, cheap suit. Oh, I can't suit. wait to see. Th- yeah, when you see her, this is the first time she's going to meet a hero in person. Yeah. I'm wondering if when the press is here, if you should have a cellular phone in case you get calls to congratulate you. <laughs> yeah. Or other suicide calls. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I have to be a, a 24-hour watch. Hey, if anybody else feels like killing themselves, feel free. Don't forget. I mean, feel free number. to call. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can I plug my TV shot during the Oh, uh, shut conference? up, Jackie Puppet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. Prepare for the press conference. Sally Kellerman's here. She's promoting this new movie, but more importantly, I'll probably, like, rip her clothes off now. <laughs> what is it? Remember our, uh, our old friend, I don't know if you know, but we have a very good friend, Congressman Serrano. You've yes. spoken to him on the air. Right. Yes, yes. He said as soon as Congress goes back into session, he's going to put um, in for an award for you. Ooh. Some sort of an award. He's a great congressman, that guy. How did he win re-election? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he slipped by. We didn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who voted him in? Well, he's a great man. Uh, tell Congressman Serrano I appreciate that. See, I'm being recognized already. Excellent. He said, he said, am I hearing correctly? Did Howard save a life? I said, that's exactly what you that heard. That is correct, Congressman. <laughs> I wish we could get Congressman Serrano down here. And the people at Shadow Traffic were complaining that that guy just really wreaked havoc on the bridge with traffic. Listen, yeah, you big know, deal. I can't believe that. Big deal. Shadow Traffic. <laughs> Those skeeves. I just saved a life. Yeah, hurry up and jump and get off the bridge so traffic can Hey, there's going. a 30-minute delay now. <laughs> hey, what's going on with um, the press? Tell no, me what well, we're Well, nothing at. yet so far. I got, I got Channel, right, right, two, Channel 2 is going to be here. Yeah. Current Affair is going to be here. Right. Extra is going to be here. Who now, else? Now we have a guy from Rescue 911 who wants to do like a little like... <gasps> oh. Rescue 911? He's actually on the phone. You want me to put him through? <laughs> Let me speak to Rescue 911. Oh, is, hey, maybe this oh, is sure. your... Uh, <laughs> is somebody well, no, going to reenact I mean, you in the TV show? No, I want to play myself. Then it would be your acting debut. Yes. 
<laughs> Ooh, Rescue 911, huh? And and that's not on any Paramount network. Let me take a break. Oh, I got to take a commercial that's break. That's on a real network. We got to get Sally in here. But and we yeah, got to get the guy. We forget her in well, our friends. Well, listen. Get you I didn't know this was going to happen. <laughs> All right, now, hold on. We'll be back right. right after these words. So Sally, what are you here for today? <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I don't know. I'm here. You know, it's a question I've asked myself. So, uh, have you done the show before? I've been on the radio with Howard, you know, from my home. Oh, but you've never been in, in here? In Los Angeles, never been here. Never been to this fabulous <laughs> green room. Have you ever seen him before? Not too close, are you? I've seen <laughs> his, uh, <laughs> I've seen his pictures. I've seen his pictures, that's it. So, what, what do you think about Howard, though? Well, I, I thought I'd save that for Howard. <laughs> I had to tip my mitt. <laughs> are you a fan at all, or? No, no matter how much I deny it. I'm, uh, Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm confused about that. <laughs> you know, I'm sitting here grinning from ear to ear, but I'm, I'm confused. I hate to, I hate to go either way. You know, I hate to admit. It. Ralph just came in and said Sally Kellerman's really sexy, with that voice in the hall. Boy, and she, the eye contact. Yeah. Well, bring her in. She's going to want to congratulate me that I'm a she hero. Drinks you in. Let her drink me in. <laughs> This is very exciting. As a matter of fact, we're holding a press conference at 9.30. There has been such overwhelming uh, demand for interviews with me because of what has happened here. In case you're just tuning in, a man threatened to jump off the bridge. He was about to jump off the bridge, and I saved his... Oh, Sally. Mmm. <laughs> nice body on you. Mmm. He's already forgotten what he did. <laughs> Ooh, maybe I'm not. Maybe I should salute you. Well, I don't know. Maybe I should be saluting you. Here, get close to that microphone. Don't be afraid. Yeah, she's sitting way back. Yeah, don't I be afraid, afraid to get close. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. That voice. Get close to it. Why are you afraid? Because I'm a hero? Well, you've thrown me off, you know, becoming a hero this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You were prepared for that a-hole that used to sit here. Now, all of a sudden, you've got a hero interviewing you. Yeah, I, I had a whole speech, you know, all ready for you. But you no, look damn good. Well, thank you, Howard. You don't look bad yourself. She's the original Hot Lips. Uh, From the movie mash. Yeah. You were the real Hot Lips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, what's her name? Uh, has, what's her name? Hula something. Hula ham. No. <laughs> well, how Loretta we... Swit. Loretta Swit. Ugh. You don't like to hear her name, huh? Yeah. Oh, no, no. A little like jealousy going name. on? <laughs> Can't handle it? I saw like a little reaction there. Oh, no, she's very nice. I, I, you know, just Sally was like, I don't want to do TV. I don't want to be on MASH and TV. I was already in the movie. I'm a movie star. I'm a movie star. I don't do television MASH. That's not going to work. <laughs> That's beneath me, and it'll never make a good series. Say it. <laughs> Say you hate her. Oh, oh how It's true, isn't it? <laughs> Bug off, babe. I mean, you know. <laughs> uh, you hate her. No, I actually don't hate who her. Who was the better hot lips, you or her? Oh, I'll tell you who I think, but you answer. You answer. Well, you what know is the, the answer to that, but I mean, that, that's beside the point. <laughs> no, the answer is you, of course. Now, listen, guys. Yeah. Uh, you know, I came in here, I... I uh, I kind of copped out, unlike you, who, you know, just says anything you want. I, I'm kind of a wuss in certain areas, and certainly in relation to you, you know. No, oh, please. Whether, oh, do you like Howard, or don't you like Howard? And uh, then I find myself giggling. Well, today you kind of saved yourself, you know, with this uh, Hero heroic uh, kind of deal. Well, yeah, there's always something funny. like that every but five or six years. I was perusing <laughs> your book last night, I, uh, uh, and, and it was interesting how, you know, inventive and creative and yeah, beginning you were. But yeah, on the other hand, yeah. how shocked I was at how cruel you can be. And I, I didn't realize that. <laughs> oh, please. I I'm the worst son it. of a bitch on the planet. But not today. Not today. There's a whole so new now, Howard. What is it, Papa Foley? I was going to give a speech about, uh, you know, cruelty and oh. life. You know, how difficult oh, life come is for on, everybody. Sally. But after saving the guy's life. I saved the guy's life today. Why don't you know lighten up? I'm, what sorry, is I'm sorry oh, to interrupt Sally, but I'm representing the 16th congressional district on the phone. It's Congressman Serrano. Oh, excuse me. For one second, oh, Sally. No, this is going to get Sally. Time, you know? No, this is going to get Sally hot. Watch this. Just watch. Be a part of the action. Hello, Congressman. How are you, Howard? Congressman, I am in uh, in a uh, deep discussion with Sally Kellerman, a renowned actress, Academy Award nominee. But I feel it's necessary to interrupt when a congressman calls in. Is there something you would like to say? Yes, Howard. First of all, I am sorry to interrupt the conversation with Howard. Uh, I was enjoying myself. Yes. But I, I wanted to tell you, you two, two quick things. First of all, to Congratulate and to thank you for, for oh, your act of, wow. of heroism. Thank you. On behalf of the was people of Was that guy from your city. district? Was that guy from your district, Congressman? I, I don't know. I haven't asked him yet. Uh, <laughs> you guys sound like brothers. <laughs> we could very well be. <laughs> well, let me just say, <laughs> Congressman. So here's what I want to do for you, Howard. Go First ahead. of all, uh, immediately you will be uh, awarded uh, from my office a certificate of merit for your actions. Mm. 
and yes. come and come January, <laughs> in the congressional record, Thank the whole you. incident will be put forth for the history of the republic. This Thank record you. does not disappear. Right. And I'm very serious. I, I this this was something you did, which uh, I think. First of all, should make the FCC take a second look at you. Yes. And, and not see you in the uh, this, dumb this way award, that they always look at you. May I ask a question? I don't mean to interrupt you, Congressman, sure. but I do have interviews to get to. Uh, does this award come with some sort of uh, medal or something I can wear? Uh, no, uh, it doesn't come with a medal. It's a simple uh, certificate, but All right. I'm sure it will look very good on your wall. Good. Very Please. nice. Oh, yeah, there's lots of room in here. Oh, yeah. that's excellent. Uh, let me. Uh, the certificate, the congressional. Let me ask record. you something, Congressman. Why yes, is it that these actresses aren't overwhelmed in, the, in a hero's presence and they don't slide their hand down a hero's mm. pants? Oh. Well, I think Treat them to a massage. That's, a, that's something I'm sure you can A therapeutic very well. massage. <laughs> Yeah, I'll negotiate that myself, Congressman. I won't embarrass you with sexual talk. Let no, me say something, sexual. Congressman. You know it's interesting Congressman. that he says he's going to no put movie. you in the congressional record because so far only bad things have been in yeah. that record about you. know, you. Congressman, Robin is right. And, and Sally, please listen to me when I say uh -huh. this, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Uh -huh. Congress has not been kind to me <laughs> over the years. Uh, things have been written in the congressional record about me. That will last forever. And That's right. It's not the kind of thing you want your kids to read. <laughs> so I must say that, uh, Congressman Serrano, you have been there. You've been a supporter. I want to thank you. To call me a hero, I'm embarrassed. Uh, I don't... Uh, but you are a hero, huh? Oh, Get Robin. You are a hero. You. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank you. I I'm embarrassed. I, I was people. doing what I knew I had to do as a citizen. And well, I, I just want to say... Let me just point the battery. Sally wants to plug a movie. She's I giving know. me a look like she's ready to shoot me. Yeah, great to hear from you, Congressman. Get <laughs> yeah, oh, hold that. on, please. This is a bare moment, Sal. You're part of history. But uh, let me just say something. I'm embarrassed today because, uh, quite frankly, it just occurred to me, I can't even spell Serrano. I don't even know what that means. But I'm going to look into Congressman, I want to thank you. I know you're sincere when you say this. Yes. Of course it wasn't necessary, but I will accept the certificate as soon as you present it. It will be presented to Thank you, and as I said, the congressional record will have your name in a positive way for the rest of the republic. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you, Congressman. You are my hero. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye. Before you get to your movie, you want to hug a hero? Uh, no. no. Why? Why can't you hug me hello? What's the big deal? You know you want to. You have to hug Rodney in those movies. You can certainly hug me. <laughs> right. How gross was that hugging Rodney? I love Rodney. Oh, but, I love Rodney, too. Yeah, but it had to be weird, huh? Oh, no. You did that. <laughs> What'd you think about when you did that? <laughs> did he come on to you? Did he want to sleep with you? Because he was single Absolutely all the time. not. You think I'm Rodney's type? Absolutely not. I asked him to dinner once. I said, well, Rodney, you know, I'd love you to come up and, you know, meet the kids. And he looked at me like with his face, and a look on his face like, do I have to? You yeah, know? I don't want to do that. The last place on earth he wanted to be was at dinner at my house. Sally, just, what know. is this? Uh, obviously, you're anxious to plug the movie. You're excited about hey, it. No, I it's am a, actually no, excited. I understand about it. that you're excited about it, but something very rare happened here. Sometimes it's I time to know, put aside what your personal <laughs> thing is and to say, Howard, Howard, this is an exciting moment in history. No, I'm telling you this totally through me because I really was going to give you a speech about life so hard. You know what I mean? How come we're so mean? And you know, I'm not like, mean. I tell the truth. Things are going, ah, oh, bullshit. I mean, no, wait, wait a second. Hold on a second. Now, wait a second. This is a radio program that doesn't allow foul language. I see. Forgive me. You're saying that I'm mean? No, I, just some stuff in the book. You know, oh, like, like what? Name one thing. I don't want to name, name it. Name it. I'm not going to Tell me what you think is cruel because I'm an honest man. I tell the truth the way well, it is. Was it the Kathy Lee no. Gifford stuff? No, no. You Kathy tell Lee the truth Gifford the is you, a. You, you, you think tell Kathy the Lee. The way you see, I don't know Kathy Lee Gifford, but I'm not going to talk about What Kathy do you think Gifford. of Kathy Lee Gifford? I'm going to talk about. You know, she's a creep, right? <laughs> you know that she's <laughs> full of it. Absolutely. I don't know anything about it. Well, my son watches Bible tapes. Oh, so excuse me. What's something wrong with me? Listen, I'm not going to encourage this because that's the only. That's the part I don't like. Want to grab a hero's ass? I actually, you know. Now come hug me goodbye. Come on, hug me goodbye. Come on, hug me goodbye. What, what, this is crazy not oh, to hug. What's this going to cost me? Oh come on, no, no, no. God. Just come on over and give me a hug. Let me hey, feel your you're body. You're spreading a little love. You want Come over here. Take the headphones off. That's right. I wanted it to be loved. You don't keep your body right. in that kind that's of shape right. not to hug a guy. Come over here. Come on, I'm a good looking oh, guy, too. God. Come on over and give me a hug. Really gonna do this? I want to feel my chest against your unbroad breast. Come here. <laughs> you just ran no, away. No, no, no. Come over here. <laughs> I just want to push up against you. Come on over. I can't believe it. I'm such, I'm so weak. You know what I mean? Come here. Come here. Can I hug you? Come here. Come here, nice come here, come here. Look at this. Do we look good together or what, baby? Come here. Come on. Don't, don't, Thanks, don't, don't run away oh, she so wants quick. to get yeah, away. No, you know, what are you doing? Been. You smell good. Let me smell you. She had a bridge uh, jump. Yeah. You know, I've never seen a face like that on a woman while she's what? hugging a man. What are you doing? You turned off? No, I think you're I think you're sure really I'm horny for me. Thank you. Yeah, Watch sure. it, Sally. You believe I did? Boy, she, I never saw anybody Ooh. almost vomit during I'm a hug. I'm telling you. I'm your metier. <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> Come on, no, how'd that feel when you hugged me? Tell me there was uh, a certain... Very nice. Nice sweater, you know. Uh, was there something animal going a, on there? Clean as a whistle. You know? That's what you think. I, I had lots of garlic last night. I had diarrhea last night. Oh. 
<laughs> what? See, how'd I get? How'd what I did get? you say? I didn't even hear. But she you. said I was clean I as a whistle. Was... I told her I had oh. diarrhea. Oh. Now, see, if I wasn't such a wuss, you know, I either sat here, or I'd have gone over and hugged you. But instead, I kind of go over and like. Yeah, why don't you give me a and... good hug? Why don't you just go for it? I wasn't going to go. I wasn't. Should have grabbed my ass. I should have said absolutely. I won't give you a hug. Grab me. You know? Grab me. Come over here again and grab my ass. I understand. Wait a minute. She keeps talking to you about you spreading love, and she won't love you. Forget that. I'm looking at her chest. That's it. That is. You are completely excited. I can see through your sweater. I see through your sweater. You're excited from hugging me. I can see it. I can see it. It's as plain as the writing on that wall. Yeah. It's a hot morning, and you are looking like it's freezing in here. Tell me you didn't get aroused. Oh, I'm a hero. Yeah. All right, listen, oh, Sally. You are today. Sally. Yeah. I really do want to thank you for coming in. I'll look forward to the movie, the new Robert Altman movie. It is called La Petite. No, <laughs> Ready to Wear. Or Ready to Wear. They, La they made a slight alteration, they said, and they've changed it to Ready to Wear. And I want know. to thank you for hugging me. Hey, my pleasure. I appreciated it. Oh, thanks. Well, I'd appreciate it more if you grabbed my ass. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Sally. How did it go, Sally? It was fun. <laughs> I got here on the right morning. You know what I mean? <laughs> Excuse me for a second, Robin. Congratulations. Senator? Congratulations. Thank you, Senator. Uh, what are you trying to do? Take Dr. Ruth's job? Well, now come on. You're saving people. You're now going to have a, a psychiatric half hour where <laughs> everyone calls you and tells you, help me, help me. Senator, I'm a little <laughs> embarrassed about uh, what has gone on, that people are now calling me a hero and I saving... I think it's great. It's, uh, it's a little embarrassing, but... Uh, but it, is there well anything you can do with this? Is there anything you can say <laughs> yes. about it? In your own mind, you are definitely a hero. Ru- <laughs> mind, How about I do the comedy and you do the political speech? <laughs> <laughs> well, Senator, is there anything you'd like to say to me now that I've saved someone's life? Thank I'm, you, God. I mean, you always believed Would in you me. Hear that one? Senator, yeah. you've always believed in me. You've always felt Absolutely. that there was more to You even said to the FCC, hey, Stern's doing a lot of good things. Doesn't this embarrass the FCC now because they're still after me that here I have saved a man's life? Well, let me ask you, are they still after you? Of course they are. No. Yeah, they, they're still fining us over $2 million. It doesn't oh, even no. matter what the courts say. They still come after oh, us. Oh, that ridiculous. Not, they're still, yes. You know, you're going to win, though, you see. Yeah, win. I win. I'll win, probably all right. They're embarrassed, and they should stop it. Right. Really. It's probably too big a gesture for them to say. Yeah, they can't say they were you know wrong. Why? We, 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 start, we started this stuff, but we really were out of line. What we did before is something we're willing to put aside. I was hoping the senator was going to get on and make a big deal that I was a hero. Yeah, I mean, isn't there, isn't there something you could, like, isn't the Senate, you know, some place well, where you can I, do something? Can you okay, okay, enter no, into I the record? You, I get your point. Here, here, oh, thank you. Uh-huh. Is, here is this, this person that you've been after, and here he is. He's able through the reaching so many people that this 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 distraught soul reaches out to him and he saves them, you see? Right. So you may not like him, but you know there there are people that listen and people who do like him and What's the senator what talking about? Where are you gonna say this? About, about senator, you gotta say this somewhere. I will. You gotta say this on the floor of the Senate. Well, now, now you've never told me how to say it. You've always left it to me. Right? No, 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 no. You no, we didn't tell you how. But I'm now a hero. <laughs> oh, you, I saved someone's life. He, he almost jumped off a bridge. I think it's fabulous. Thank you. I that's all I want. Is. I mean, that's one of your constituents. Yeah. I think it's. I saved one of your constituents. The guy voted for you. Well, by let the way. me find out he <laughs> how he voted. <laughs> how he voted. <laughs> I want to speak to him first. Senator, thank you for calling in. No, no. Listen, I wanted to just... Well, happy holiday. Thank you very much. Same to you. Are we, uh, are we going to Albany together? I'm am thinking I, am about I it. Am I going to have the privilege of, of driving in that? You have a big limo, don't you? And yes, you I do. driver. Right? Yes. Huh? Yes. Oh, Howard drives it himself. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I was thinking of going in your limo, actually. <laughs> um, no, are, Senator, are I want to... Are up there in the inaugural day, do you know? I would like to go. I was wondering if you had heard anything. Yeah, I mean, well, you talk to Pataki and find out if he really wants me there. I might—I I don't know. I might be too much of an embarrassment. Did you get your invitation yet? No, I, I didn't. They're just making the plans. As a matter of fact, last night they had this event to raise money to, to uh, for the inaugural event, you know, donations, et cetera. Hmm. And uh, so they're, they are putting it together. It is on... Um, New Year's Day, so that's kind of a rough one. Yeah, I don't know if I can make oh, that. Boy. I know my dad really wants to go to the inauguration. He that would be he's got a real hard on for that. Yeah, but you party so much on New Year's. I don't know if. You yeah, I know. I might be up late. Uh, are you a party no. <laughs> I was thinking of having a party yeah, actually. I'm I won't be here. What, that's what, what, when you would have a party. Soul you are in person. You know that, that. Hey, we could have a good limo ride up there. Me, you, my father. I'll get a few strippers. <laughs> Man, we'll have fun. Remember that lady your papa likes. The what? You know that lady your papa likes? Yeah, right. Huh? Does he Get her. like her? Yeah, he sure he does. Yeah. What's yeah. her name again, Robin? Oh, jeez. You remember she was at the book party? 
Yeah. My father has a real... Only for her. Sally Kirkland. Yeah, Sally Kirkland. That's it. That's hey, it. Senator, thanks. I got plans to make. I'm going to go do a press conference now. The press is uh, clamoring for me to make a statement. That's it. Same with you. Thank you, Senator. Take care now. That's bye, the great Rob. Senator bye, D'Amato. Bye. Who just I was going to compliment him on how clever he is. You know, he's not often cited for what a brilliant man he is. Yeah, don't compliment him. He didn't compliment me on being a hero. I know. That's <laughs> why I didn't do it. Good. <laughs> hey, listen, here's what's going on. Hey, what happened to Rescue 911? I don't know. You have to ask John. He was the one who ran in saying they were on the phone. Do you think he was duped? Who isn't Again? that? Uh, isn't that William Shatner's show? Yes. Rescue nine one one. It started out as nothing more than a typical Wednesday morning in New York. All of a sudden, a despondent man on the George Washington Bridge contemplates suicide. As he stared down at the icy December waters of the Hudson, he uses a cellular phone to issue a last desperate plea for help. Fortunately, that cry went out to none other than radio's Howard Stern. The brave, quick-thinking Stern then talked the caller out of taking his own life. This is Rescue 911. <laughs> Howard Stern, a true hero, and I am TV's William Shatner. I am very, very wealthy. I am a <laughs> I am a voiceover. I do everything. <laughs> What is it? I have to interrupt again. Um, Rescue 911 was bogus. Oh, okay. Uh, but on our phone <laughs> mm -hmm. is former mayor of New York, Edward Koch. Oh. Ah. Mr. Mayor, by now I understand that you have heard the news of what yeah. happened here on the radio. I did. And uh, <laughs> I'll allow you to, of course... Uh... Who is this? Is this really the uh, the mayor? This is, well, I'm, I'm the old mayor, the one they threw out. No, you're the mayor. No, I mean... Uh, that is the mayor. No, there have been two mayors after me. Oh, uh, it is him. Yeah, it is him. Yeah, well, you think me. it was a fake? <laughs> now, I, I am calling uh, because uh, uh, Howard Stern, who is at the other end of this uh, phone, has now become a national hero. Thank you. <laughs> right, it's wonderful. I, it's true. I'm having a, in fact, the press is all over it. I saved the guy from killing himself. You know, I really don't think you're going to be able to pull off this humble act. Every time somebody says you are a hero, you say, <laughs> Of course. Well, well he no. is. Let me let me say something, Mr. Mayor. You've yeah. embarrassed me by calling in like this impromptu. No, it's not I, an embarrassment. You are entitled to deference from every single uh, person, particularly radio hosts, who don't do a quarter of the job that you do. And I haven't you. saved anybody in days. Is it great? Listen, listen, let me say something. Isn't it the greatest honor under God's great domain to save another human being's life? Well, uh, there is a Jewish saying. You're Jewish, right, Howard? Half Jewish. Half Jewish. Okay. Yes. There's a saying that if you save one life, it's like saving the whole world. That's wow. a huge thing. Wow. So you saved the whole world this morning. Let me say something. Uh, I'm embarrassed by the accolades I have received today. I am not a hero. Let me just say something, Mr. Mayor, it seriously. It was something anybody would have done. It was that something that anyone would have done. The fact that I acted with such calm and reserve and thought oh. clearly through the crisis, <laughs> I, um, I compliment myself uh, hardly for that Listen, because I was born with that gift. Let me ask you this. Uh, yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Uh, let you me ask, me? Howard, let me ask you something. Yes. Um, since I don't know know uh, the background. Uh, why was the guy up there? What is he, uh, a wacko? This was a man, no, no, not a wacko. This was a man I'm working... I'm that you should say that. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. This is, <laughs> <laughs> although they did drag him off to the funny farm. Yeah. No, Mr. Mayor, this was a man who called in, a young man with a wife, uh, children. He uh, has a job. Life became unbearable for him. He saw no reason to live. It was becoming uh, a desperate situation. And I'm sure tonight all over the news you will see me as I do this rescue. Well, I wanted to yes. read to you something. This is over the uh, New York Metro News AP wire. The Associated Press. Go yeah. ahead. Yes. Port Authority officials say police grabbed a man who threatened to jump from the George Washington Bridge this morning while he talked to Howard Stern on live radio. That's correct. You know, Howard, we could turn this into a movie. Uh, what do you mean, we, white man? <laughs> <I'm dead. laughs> well, I have my own movie. What, what we could do is, you know, uh, you're calling him, and I'm alerting all the talk hosts around the country, and then we come running over to the bridge, 10,000 <laughs> of us, and say, Howard, you are our leader. What can we do to help? Well, let me tell you something. When I heard he was jumping, I first thought it was uh, Cuomo's campaign manager. <laughs> <laughs> But listen, uh, no political humor for the mayor. Yes. You might have said Cuomo. Right. It could have been him. That's true. But let me say something. Wait a minute. Let yeah. me just also read to you that listeners say the shock jock calmed the would-be jumper Thank you. and seemingly kept him from jumping. Uh -huh. Yes. Seemingly. They can't give me the full what, what was the one line that you think was your best line to him? Well, let me say something, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. I, um, I, in <laughs> fact, one second, uh, the, the mayor has asked a question, Robin. I'm sorry, I have to interrupt you one more time just to read you the final line of the story. Yeah. yeah. Stern called a news conference for later this morning <laughs> to discuss the incident. Yes. Now, let me say something, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. Yeah. 
You asked me what particular the, line. The one line, about. yeah. It wasn't one particular line. It was my sense of humor that kept him alive. Oh, good. By keeping him laughing, by keeping him yeah. engaged. In fact, right. I didn't sit there and preach to him about how great life was. Yeah. I used humor. That's, right. Listen, humor will save the world. How come you can't uh, use humor with the FCC uh, uh, members? Why are they on your uh, rear end? Because they have no sense of humor. Do so they say? should be replaced? Uh, of course. Of course, Mr. Mayor. And you've always been there for me. And let me say you were the greatest mayor that ever, uh, no. ever was. You say I was the greatest. I, I would do. never say that. Well, you've complimented me. I compliment <laughs> you. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. All good luck, Howard. Good luck with you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That is the great Mayor Koch, yes. who I believe was the greatest mayor that ever ran New well, York City. Well, nobody's been able to hold on to the job as long as he had. That's right. Had it. I thought that was funny. That usually heroes don't call news conferences. <laughs> right. I just thought that was interesting. <laughs> well, that's a bad spin on it. I got to get my uh, publicity man on that. It says here. Oh, this is so. It's such a funny little item. Oh. Stern said later in the show that he indeed saved the man's life. <laughs> <laughs> no, no humility. No humility whatsoever. What is it, Papa Foley? I just want to give you a um, a small uh, smattering of the press that is in attendance. All right, go ahead. Channel Eleven. Thank you. Channel Two. Yes. Channel Five. Right. New York Post. Daily News, Ooh. there's a freelance video uh, person who, you know, distributes to different Unde places. Understood. But I think my favorite person that's out there is uh, Steve Dunleavy and A Current Affair. Oh. Very good. Oh. Yeah. Finally. The great Steve Dunleavy. Well, is he is an important man. They sent their presence. star reporter. Thank you. Well, that is very exciting. I'm just glad I acted with grace and calm. You're now, glad that you had the gifts and talent. To keep this man on the phone. Because of this great um, moment in history, I will release to the press, I am working on releasing to the press, the video of me saving this child. We're going to, Howard, we're going to... The video? Yeah, we're because gonna, we have e-cameras in here. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to start the press conference off with showing a small clip of that video before oh. you come out. Oh. So there's a TV screen for them to watch. Now you're talking. Now let me tell you who else uh, should be in attendance. Go ahead. Helen, the woman who uh, was also on the bridge. Thank you. Does she, she have anything to do? Shh, please, <laughs> Robin. She's a big fan of the show. Go ahead. And also, with any luck, I hope to have um, the arresting officer. Ah. Oh. Are you saying the lieutenant or the arresting officer? Both. Wow. Both the lieutenant. And the arresting officer. Bubba some, Bowie out there working. Oh, oh. See if they can quickly draw up some kind of plank or something. Well, there's a guy already who um, who does like uh, who saw the whole thing. Yes. And he says he does like sketches for um, for the courtroom. So he said, you know, do we want him to sketch it? I said, yes. you can have it here by 9:30. Sketch a away. Absolutely. <laughs> sketches would be great. So we're we're probably looking at around a 9:40 start on the press conference. Bring in a goddamn hunk of the bridge if you can. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. Let's review what's going to happen, because we're minutes away from the press conference. This is Helen Howard. All right, Are yes. the officers here? Are the officers here yet? No. Are they coming? So, supposedly. We'll give them 10 more minutes. Well, we should really get the press conference going. Yeah, yeah how long do you want this I told to last? The I told the press, like, 940, so they're cool. Okay. Get that Helen in here, and I'll get everyone whipped into shape. Now, Robin, let's get our signals straight. All right. Fafafu Fafu is going to go out and make a brief statement to the press. To announce you. To announce me. Fred's working on that now because Fafa Fui can't be trusted on his own. <laughs> Never let him speak extemporaneously. And, and Jackie, Fred can't be trusted, so you look it over. Um, All right. Anyway, come on in, Helen. Uh, there she is, Helen. Watch well, hi, oh. Helen. Hi, Helen. Hi, Good to see you. Morning. You're lovely. You are. You're a nice woman, and you handled yourself beautifully. Grace under fire, I call that. Thank you. All right. Now, let me, let me just hold on a second. Here's the way I see the press conference going. Don't be nervous. I she see seems it. more nervous now than when she saved the guy's life. No, no. Oh, I no. saved the guy's life. She assisted. He, oh, oh, oh right. okay. I'm sorry. I was shaken. <laughs> Helen, uh, believe me, there's no way he could have escaped from you. I could see that. You're very strong. You look very powerful. <laughs> there was no way he was jumping at that I'm point. I'm a former hooker in rugby, so he wasn't going anywhere. Is that right? Yeah. You're a former hooker? In oh, rugby. rugby. Oh, in rugby. Oh, okay. Anyway. Listen to me, Helen. Just you, you relax. Calm down. Get used to the situation now being in the media spotlight. Take a few deep breaths. I've been in the media spotlight for 20 years. You have to learn to get used to it. <laughs> now, here's the way it goes. Fafafu Fafu, makes a brief statement to the press, mm -hmm. calling me a hero. <laughs> then Fafafu Fafu will introduce a two-minute video clip of me saving the guy's life. Ooh, very nice. What will be seen in that video is me talking the guy down from the bridge and then the daring uh, 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 tackle that Helen put on him and, and the police. Then after that, Gary will then say, and now in person, blah, blah, the blah, blah, blah. The, the man of the hour, the whole thing. <laughs> Howard Stern, I walk out. Helen will be there. You, of course, Robin, will be there. Now, when we walk out, I will uh, say, of course, you know, a couple of statements. 
And then I'll say, you know, some people are calling me hero, and then all of a sudden I'll say, hey, listen, I'm no hero. And then you, that's your cue to that's go, right. oh, I'm yes, you, you are. You are a hero. Right, let's rehearse this. Uh, and by the way, members of the press, uh, some are calling me a hero. I am no hero. Uh, Howard, uh, you are a hero. No, no don't Get say that. To You're it. embarrassing me. You saved a man's life that makes you a hero. Uh, okay, very good. Okay. Obviously, you're professionally, you know what you're doing. <laughs> Helen's the wild card here. <laughs> so uh, during my uh, discourse on the events that happened, I will say, uh, by the way, I'd like to introduce uh, Helen. Helen, give me your full name. Trimble, T-R-I-M-B-L-E. <laughs> what are you doing? I have to find a place to write it down. My <laughs> notes are so full of statements so that I need to... Mm -hmm. no. No. Gary, write down the following name. Helen Trimble. Trimble. Trimble what? Trimble. 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 So he'll write down Helen Trimble. <laughs> what? Howard, I don't know what the hell. Remember I came in here and I listed, you know, that media that was out there? Yeah. Well, I blinked and they, like, multiplied by three. I They're don't like know, tribbles. If there's more people that were here than for either of the governor press conferences. Wow. Really? Oh, this is exciting. You know why? This is one of the, one of, a big media expert said, this is a big story on two counts. First of all, it really is a Christmas story. A guy despondent at the holidays of all the people in the world to choose to call, he chooses you. Right. And then the other big story is that all these police and everybody in Helen are listening to this radio show. If this and show they all come. If this show isn't so huge, you know, in other words, this show is like one big community. Everyone nice was spin. listening. Nice spin. Incorporate that into your speech. Okay. Yes, it'll look tacky great, if Harry. I say it. It'll look tacky if I say it. This morning, something extraordinary happened to my wolf. He saved a man from jumping off of a bridge. This shameless act makes him one of the most courageous, calm, under fire people I know. First, you will get to view my Wolf being calm under adversity. Through a video presentation, you will see my Wolf courage firsthand. Then after the tape, a short statement and brief Q&A. And now, my Wolf in action. Please watch this monitor. It's hey. gonna be a bit difficult. Listen to me. What's what? your first name? Give me a name. I'm known by Prince. What's up? All right, your name is Prince, or are you formally known as Prince? Yes, there you go. All right, you are Prince? Yeah. Listen, Prince, let me tell you something. Yeah. You see me? Yeah. You haven't jumped yet. I, if, let me tell you something. You might think so, life's a bed of roses for right. me or someone like that, but it's not. You got to wait till my book comes out. How yeah, you you got, let me tell you what you got to look forward to. You ready, Prince? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Robin's book. Right. I've got a couple of things planned, um, movie-wise. Yeah. And sure. I'm telling you, I've got. I'm going to revolutionize the way you look yeah. at entertainment. Yeah, you're not going to uh -huh. see Howard's movie. And if you had any, you got any interest? Like, what? you interested in anything? Now the cops are here. <laughs> well, so what? Ignore that. Uh -huh. If we, if you got turned on to anything in life, or you had a little hobby or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Said, there are exciting things happening. You know right. what? You really ought to come to visit us. Yeah. Before you do this. Yeah, why don't you come and visit us? I'd love to... Oh, and by the way, first of all, so. let me thank you for calling in. I've always wanted to help someone who was about to jump yeah. from a bridge. What do you mean? Oh, you yeah. won't come down to the studio? What? I work nights. That would be impossible. You can get to the you bridge know? at this time, yeah. but you can't get to the show? No, because today that's it. You know what I'm saying? What is it, Fafa Foley? Dominic Barber just called and just asked the guy Hi. one favor. What? Could he say before he dies that Dominic is his Alex. lawyer and Alex. the bridge is unsafe? Yeah, hello? Yeah, the, yeah this is, uh, I'm a friend of yours, by the way. Uh, the police are here. They got him uh, handcuffed now. They got him in handcuffs? Good. Yeah, that's all I was doing. Oh, Once again, I yes. kept him on the line until he jumped. You did. I was listening. Man, and I stopped good. Me and the lady stopped him. Okay. And now the man in person, the hero of the hour, the courageous calm, brave and generous, heroist of heroes, my wolf, Howard Stern. Thank you. Thank you. Which microphone should I use here, Gary? It doesn't matter. Stand up. Let me put these headphones on. All right. I can't hear anything through my headphones, so I'll just assume that I'm on the air. I want to make a, a brief statement before I answer any questions. I didn't know what kind of day it would be today. Every day I wake up in the morning, I prepare myself for work, I take a shower. I think every day I'm just coming in to entertain millions of people and make them laugh. But I have to tell you, something happened on my show today that was uh, quite amazing. A man called me. I didn't know what kind of man he was. As the story began to unfold, I found that he was a Spanish gentleman was down on his luck. He had a job, but he felt 
despondent. He was uh, married with children. And here in the spirit of the holidays of Christmas and Hanukkah, I listened to his story. I tried to remain cool and calm through the entire event and keep him on the phone until he could be stopped from killing himself. You know, today I'm reminded of an old Jewish phrase. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, asher kiritanu b'mitzvotav, v'sivanu l'chak nekmer shel Shabbat. And what does that mean? It means if someone can save one's life. No, one life. If oh. someone, thank you, Robin. <laughs> if you could save one life, then you have saved the entire world. I'll be quiet, oh, Penny. Geez. Don't rain on my parade. I, make, I did not. I said no OJ questions and no statements. I'm going to point at you. I must tell you, um, when I read the book about John F. Kennedy and PT-109, I was quite impressed with Kennedy's bravery. And today I feel like a little bit like John Kennedy. Now I know how a cop feels when he walks into a crack den. Or how a fireman feels pulling children from a smoke-filled building. I know how a doctor feels when he saves a gerbil from a gay man's buttocks. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I know more than I've ever known before. Jesus. And in the past, some of you have accused me of being racist or something like this. But would a racist pluck a Spanish brother, a Spanish New Yorker, from a violent, wet, chilly death? Would a racist rescue a foreign brother from a suicide plunge that would have left his wife and 18 children and 45 relatives homeless. <laughs> I ask you. I would have saved any New Yorker, whether he be a black man, a white man, a Jewish man, a Christian man. I would even save a Chinese man. Well, maybe not a Chinese man. I don't know. Of course I would. I would save anybody. You've forgotten the Muslims. I would save a Muslim. To my Muslim brothers, I say, Salam Aleichem. Aleichem Salam. <laughs> Some have even had the nerve to call me a hero today, but I must tell you I'm uncomfortable with that term. I am not a hero. Yes, you are, Howard. You <laughs> saved a man's life. You've got to get used to the idea that you're a hero. I'm not comfortable calling myself a hero, Robin. I did what any human being would do. Not everyone does these kind of things. You're a hero. I, well, thank you for saying that. I'm embarrassed to hear it, but if you consider me a hero, fine. But I you're extended, a hero to me. I, thank you. I extended a helping hand to a person in distress. Yes, I remain calm. Yes, I remain collected. Yes, I took control of the situation. But it was not heroic. By the way, before I open up the floor to questions, uh, you've heard the tape of me saving this man's life. An artist was actually on hand to sketch what went on. This is an actual police artist who is a fan of the show. This is the gentleman calling me from the George Washington Bridge in, uh, with his cellular phone. As you can see, I'm on the phone talking with him when a woman, and it is this woman named Helen, Helen Tribble. <laughs> Trimble. Trimble, whatever. Helen came running out of her car and tried to talk the man into coming off the bridge. And then finally, as you can see in this picture, this is the police coming and apprehending the man after I held on to this man and kept him from jumping. I'd like to address uh, Helen right now. Helen, uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions from the press, but tell us uh, what happened. What happened today, I was listening to your radio station, as I have for many years, and um, I heard this man talking, saying that he was uh, looking at a police helicopter, and you said, you made a plea to your fans, please come, my loyal fans, please come to my rescue. And I was looking on the bridge for a man um, talking on a cellular phone. He was easy to pick out, and he was standing just as that picture depicted, looking down in the water. And uh, I stopped my car in the middle of the bridge, jumped out, and ran and, and put a hug on him. I got on the phone and spoke with you, and I held him there until his body, the more, he was so despondent, it was, it was terrifying. I'm, I'm still shaking from that. He was, he was shaking, and he was talking to you, and then he, his face would lighten every once and laugh. You must, I don't know what you were saying to him, but he would lighten up, and slowly, slowly he started to relax a little bit more, and then uh, another, uh, one of your fans stopped. And now demonstrate the hug on me. What kind of hug did you put on the man? As he held the phone, show us exactly what happened. Well, at first I got him from behind and held yes. him. Yes. Right. Yes. Slightly. Yes. As as I see. And then I just stood there and held him. I see. He was shaking. I see. Terribly, and um, and what did he look like? 
He was he was Hispanic. He looked like a normal all American guy for, of Hispanic. Could heritage. you tell he was in distress? Oh yes. So he would was, you in fact say that it was the my ability to make this man laugh that actually yes. saved his life? He told me that you were the only one that he felt could really help him in a straight and forthright, honest way, and uh, he had a, he, it was amazing. The thing that stands out in my mind, he had a big cross on his neck. He said, not even my faith in God, he said, was enough. I needed to hear a voice that would talk back to me and give me the faith and courage to go on. Wow. Well, that is unbelievable. Let's take a moment to reflect on what Helen has just said. I think we all need to take a breath and think about it. <laughs> a moment of silence. A moment of silence and collect our thoughts about how tremendous that statement just was. Would have been a lot better if you cried. I was trying to get her there. She had to think about the look in his eyes. You stopped her. No, she's very shook up. She is, uh, I'm going to sedate her later with some Prozac. <laughs> if there are any questions now for myself or Helen. One thing uh, that we didn't point out was yes. the community of listeners that came to this man oh, yeah. man's aid. Not only Helen, but other listeners were there. The cops who came to his rescue were listening on their radios to the show this morning and yes, knew Robin. that there was a man in distress. A lot of people have commented on the size of this audience that everyone on that bridge in unison was listening to the program the cops the helicopter reporters there was everyone cars stopping everyone yelling out howard is that howard's man is that right they blocked the whole bridge the whole bridge was blocked both ways yes is this going to set a trend you know potential suicide victims always taking their cellular phone with them howard well i don't know one can only hope that more suicide victims will call me and I will get all of the credit. I would I, uh, never say this. Go ahead, I Penny. I would never say this, and to, to respect, I know that the senators and congressmen and everybody called you today. Thank you. But there are some, not I, <laughs> who are saying this is a major scam, that this is a publicity stunt. Don't look uh, at me like well, that. Well, let me say something, Penny. I will tell you one thing, too. Excuse me, Howard. There was no scam. This man was shaking, very upset, and distraught. And you, and you <coughs> just jumped out of your car yeah. on your own. I know and you would never do that, Penny, because you don't care no, about people. It's not that easy Penny's very selfish. <laughs> it's not, right. It's not that easy to do because there's railings you have to, you, you vaulted the railings. Oh, yeah. You, you oh, yeah. Uh, Penny, uh, let me say something. First of all, I believe that would be a criminal offense to actually sit and stage something like this and use the police in that manner. This was not staged. This was not staged at all. I'm I, going to work. I'm not even at my job today. I assure you that I have never met Helen before. Uh, never. Only Howard Stern would be challenged in let such a Penny way. investigate. That's what she wants to do. I invite you to do a full investigation, all right? <laughs> well, you uh, let me, said this has been a humbling experience. How if I had, excuse me, if I had set this up, Helen would have been a stripper. All right? Think about it. Well, maybe right, it works ahead. better this way. Yes, Maybe, exactly. it's, maybe it's, you know, more believable. Well, whatever you you are a very evil person, Penny, and you have very evil thoughts. You see something devious in this. Right. Well, Obviously, you've ahead, not been made love to in a while. I'm sorry. Yes, let me recognize this woman, and then I will recognize you. Yes? You've said this has been a humbling experience. Where are you from? Channel 11 News at 10. No, that's Mary your Gomez. problem. Go ahead. All right, go ahead. Are well, you safe one of her brothers? Why even bother showing up? No one's going to watch it. All right, go ahead. How long can you stay so humble? You said this is such a humbling experience. Well, let me just say, I am uncomfortable being called a hero, because to me, I do, her I guess you could say I do heroic acts every day, I just don't recognize them. This is other people calling me a hero. How Isn't that right? Do you be establishing a suicide hotline, possibly? Uh, people have approached me on dealing with these uh, topics uh, in other ways. People have contacted me for public service announcements. They You're have open to no excuses, jeans, endorsements for your foundation? As a matter of fact, that is true. I'm thinking of linking up with no excuses, jeans, and uh, see what else can happen with that. Yes? Is there any truth to the rumor? Uh, you might uh, make your video available again? That is true. In honor of this occasion, I found 1,500 additional videotapes that I could sell. Those are the last ones left, and I wanted to get rid of them. So in honor of this day, I would do that. Yes. Howard, through your mind when you... I'm sorry. Wait a second. Where are you from, ma'am? Hard copy. Excuse me? Hard copy. Do they only hire Australians over there? I'm from England. Oh, you are. Okay. Go ahead. Can I ask you, Howard, what was going through your mind as you were talking to this man? Well, I knew we had a serious situation. Once I determined that this truly was a jumper, I said, I have to keep this man laughing. I knew, through my own cunning, I could do this. <laughs> Knowing that he was a fan of the show, I quickly said to myself, Howard, keep this guy laughing. This is a guy who lives for your show. He lives to laugh. And through a series of jokes, I kept his spirits up. And in the back of my mind the whole time, I just kept thinking, I'll keep him laughing until the cops get there. I'm sorry, one second, Petty. You can't monopolize my, my party. I don't what? know how long you were on with him. 
I believe I was on with him for a period of. Uh, Do you have I'm the time? Say it's somewhere. It was somewhere between four and seven minutes. Somewhere between four and seven minutes. Howard, inside Howard. edition here. I want to know uh, why did he choose you? Well, I believe. Uh, you know, we are the number one radio show across the country. And the reason that it is the number one radio show is because the show is so open and honest. And because uh, the show has a, a, a meaningful message. There's it a reaches, heart there. It reaches out to people. But why you? What could you do for him that other people couldn't do? Well, as Helen just said, God really did not answer this man's prayers. He needed a voice. He needed someone who, in place of God, Someone, is, someone he could think of who would make him laugh, who would make him feel like he needed to live. Through laughter, he knew I was the one man on the planet that could get him laughing again. That's why I believe he chose me. Howard, Howard I'm Caroline it's from It's a higher authority than God, that's Howard. correct. Howard, Caroline from Extra. Uh, is it too uh, Caroline late Caroline from where? Extra. 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 Well. Is, uh, is it too late for this incident to make it into your movie? And if so, who would play Helen? Who might play the jumper? Well, I don't know if we would trivialize such an event. There's a hard news show. Yeah. How does this compare to your experience in Vietnam, your tours of duties? Does it give you redemption for the villages? You I, served, I served my country. I never felt it was wrong to take out entire villages with my helicopter. I never saw any problem with that. I did what I had to do to win that war. And quite frankly, I did what I had to do today. Can I ask a question? Do you think that's... I mean, I'm not monopolizing. I'm asking a second question. You are monopolizing, but go ahead, Penny. Do you think Penny. this guy got up this morning, got a cell phone, got your phone number? I mean, Some people do have cell phones. Too, yeah, I know, but with you, I mean, if he's been going killing himself. I, mean, I think he might that, just have one in his car. I, mean, I think I that a married man with children who, uh, you know, the only person we can go by is Helen. She says she saw the look on this man's face. This was a guy ready to go over the and bridge. this is not a scam at all. 100% no. true, I not a scam. Any indication why he was doing this? He had a job. He, he had said a that, it, it, to quote him, he said that he didn't really see a reason to go on. He, um, he had a wife, he had children, but he just felt like ending it all. And there's been other days where he felt like ending it all, but today it really got to him and he went out on it the It is bridge. the holiday season, which is often a high suicide time and depression time. Yes, where are you from? Noreen Lark from Channel 2. Channel 2 News, yes. How humble Finally, is a real this? channel. How humble is this, holding a major news conference after this very humbling event? Well, so much of the press has uh, demanded to speak with me after this. I said to Robin immediately after the event, I do not want to speak to the press. But I urged him to do this. I did it because I felt, uh, as I am a member of the press, I feel that we are all brothers and sisters here, that if one of us steps out and does something courageous, we have a right to come forward and meet with the rest of the press and say what happened here. Besides all that, you get denigrated by the press all the time. Why shouldn't you point out when you do something good? As a matter of fact, I'm sure my brothers and sisters of the press will figure out a way to denigrate me over this. <laughs> Penny's Absolutely. already got her angle. Yeah, Penny already's got me figured out. Yeah, go ahead. You know, you talk to the guy on the phone. What about the cops that do this day in and day out and save lives? And they don't have the media, hard copy, a current affair, everybody right show up. But you're such a star that you talk on the phone. You saved some guy from jumping. Well, let me say something that uh, I believe the police are very brave. I think the police in this city, yesterday we saw a funeral for a cop where uh, a lot of the media actually ignored the fact that a cop was shot, and it was rather distasteful. Uh, my heroic acts have been ignored in the past as well. So, uh, finally, I'm being recognized for a heroic act. I believe the police should be uh, recognized as well. But that is your problem, not mine. You should be recognizing the uh, police for their heroic acts. You You're the ones and the firemen, yes. Do you feel any further obligation? I'm sorry, wait a second. Can we get the microphone back there? It's hard to hear. Yes. Uh, I'm from CNN. Do you feel any further obligation toward this man, or is it now you're, you're out of it? Or, or what? Well, let's uh, look at it this way. Uh, I don't know if they need me to uh, step in. I'm thinking about stepping in. If It's up to the police and the psychiatric social workers to contact me and say that they need me involved in this. I would get involved further. Take yes. him home. Helen. I'm sorry? Take him home. Yeah, I'll take him home. I'm, I'd take you home. No, actually, I would take him home before I take you home, Steve. <laughs> be honest with you. Family but, members at all? Have you talked to anybody that's related uh, to him at all? I have, have I been contacted by the wife or family? We have somebody who called and claimed to be his brother, but I have no way of knowing that, so I just took his number and we'll contact him after the show. I would suspect that the wife and family will want to come down and uh, thank me for saving the father of these children. And the but, husband. of course, you don't want that. Of course not. I am not looking for any... F thank you, Robin. I am not looking for any further <laughs> accolades. Were you surprised to hear from Koch and D'Amato this morning? Was that a surprise? That really took me by surprise. Uh, one would almost think that I called them first and told them to call in, but of course that's only a suspicious mind like Penny. I must tell you, I was truly touched when uh, the former mayor, a senator of the United States... A congressman? Up. A congressman, Serrano, who is entering my name as a heroic, some sort of another, uh, some kind of plaque or something. 
Uh, I was touched by all of the gratitude that the city has shown me and the state. Thank you. Is there any more questions? Are there any more questions? Were you ever really afraid when you I'm sorry, where are you from? Uh, from the New York Post. Oh, the New York Post. Go ahead. Were you ever really afraid once you realized that human life was hanging in the balance there? Yes, you're right. There is uh, some nervousness when one realizes that he must save a life. There is tremendous pressure on an individual when someone is pleading with you to give them a reason to live. Through my calm, through my collected way, I was able to keep my wits about me and, of course, save the day. Isn't that right, Robin? <laughs> it sounds like an accurate description. I'm sorry? When your contract runs out, will you become a cop? No, I will not become a cop. I'm not brave enough. I'm a big pussy. Yes, go ahead. What was the most emotional moment on the phone call for both him and yourself? When I finally realized that this was a man who was in deep trouble, something touched me. I don't know what it was. Some would call it God. Some would call it a life force. Some would even call it L. Ron Hubbard. Well, those people are insane. I don't believe L. Ron Hubbard is God. Do you? What was he saying that touched you? What did he say that touched me? When he said, yeah, he had a wife and kids. When he told me that, I felt really bad. I figured I had some single guy. Who cares if another single guy dies? But, uh, you know, here he has a wife and kids Howard, who are responsible. Um, and, I'd know. like to introduce yes. to the media, Lieutenant Bleeker. Lieutenant Bleeker, ladies and gentlemen. Come on in, if you could please just ah, ah, now we're talking. Step right next to the guy in the pink shirt. Put me on that microphone. I got it. Fafa Fui. I got it. Lieutenant, uh, pleasure to meet you. I believe the yeah. lieutenant has a statement to make about today's events. Lieutenant Bleeker was one of the brave officers who was on the scene and took matters into his own hands after uh, Helen subdued the man. Yes, on behalf of the Port Authority Police, we wanted to thank Howard Stern for holding this gentleman on the uh, telephone for as long as he had and enabling us to respond as promptly as we could to take the man into custody. Uh, right now the man seems to be very distraught. He's being examined uh, as an emotionally disturbed person and the doctors are going to give their scenario as to what exactly transpired and exactly why he wound up on the mid-span of the George Washington Bridge this morning. But um, as a Howard Stern listener we were able to immediately uh, become aware of the phenomena we were able to respond in kind and uh, get this gentleman off his perch so that uh, he could do no harm to himself or others. And to that end, we wanted to thank you very much for you know, assisting us uh, through your radio station in uh, removing this man from a uh, very dangerous and hazardous uh, predicament. Lieutenant, I am uh, pleased with what you have said. I uh, want to say that uh, I am always available to the police. To you de don't deserve thanks. I, do I am always available to the police whenever they need to uh, call on me. And I truly am uh, gratified by your comments, but I do not deserve any thanks. I do not deserve any praise. I did what any good citizen should do. Howard? Yes, sir. I would, I would like to ask a question to the lieutenant. Could you please address Penny Crone's allegations that this entire incident was, in fact, a hoax? Now, according to what we know at this moment, uh, Penny, this appears to be a bona fide, distraught individual who was uh, utilizing a cellular phone as odd as it might appear to uh, respond and let everyone know about his uh, dire predicament and what he was about to do. When you brought him into custody, though, what was he saying? What did he say to you? I mean, well... We spoke very briefly. Our key concern, obviously, was to get him off that perilous area. But, but wasn't uh, the, this lady here with him on the per hugging yes. him on the perilous area? Yes. And uh, they appeared to be uh, speaking. He was very distraught and appeared to be genuine at that time. Did he, did he say anything about Howard Stern or anything at all? Did he make any sense at all? Well, we spoke with him again very briefly. We tried to diffuse the situation and uh, render it as harmless as possible in the shortest amount of time. So, he so put up a fight or? no, he seemed to come along uh, rather passively once he realized that the uh, responding Is officers. He, like, mumbling Howard and foam coming out of his mouth. Oh, over boy. Oh. No. That's you, Penny. No. <laughs> That's when you're thinking about me at night, Penny. The foam comes right out of the mouth. <laughs> Penny, I have to tell you that this man was very relieved when they put handcuffs on him. He did a sigh of relief. He called Howard because, I mean, let's face it, if you're going to kill yourself and you really do it, you're not going to tell anyone. You're just going to do it. And this man did not want to die. He wanted help. He wanted someone to listen to him. And uh, Let's put it this way, Penny. As warped as I am, I would never even pull off a stunt no, like that. That would not be this right. This man was visibly distraught. And the fact that, uh, by the way, I've read the report that they were going to rename the bridge after me, and I would ask people not to do this. I don't want this kind of... Uh, the George Washington you Bridge... You would like the, to put a stop to that. I want to put, as far as I know, it's a rumor, and if that's what the mayor wants to do, so be it. I can't stop it. But, you know. What sort of things was the gentleman saying to you? 
he says, I, I've got to do it. He says, I'm going to jump, man. He kept saying, I'm going to jump, man. Did he give and any reason why he wanted to end his life? He didn't tell me anything personally. He was speaking to Howard. Yeah, well, I, was I was able to. Yeah, listen, well, I put uh, a bear hug on him. Let's be clear about it. I'm the true hero here, not Helen. I, uh, I was waving. Yeah. 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 I, I, have to, I want to say one thing, too, that I didn't say. Howard, yes. you are a hero today. Even you deny it. You are a hero. Thank you, Helen. And, uh, and you it was, gave me this strength. Right. What possessed me to do that? You normally, don't normally do stop. acts like that, Putting do you? myself in danger. You could have had a knife or gun. I don't do that kind of thing. I'm Did you feel a certain camaraderie because it was a fan felt, of the Howard Stern show? Yes, yeah. and I felt strength. I said a little prayer to myself. I prayed to the man, and I just uh, Don't went need to pray to me. That's you ridiculous. Are you married with children? Yes, anymore? with a child. I have a nine-year-old child. I'm a normal working person. <laughs> Thank you, home. I live in Brooklyn, but I work upstate New York. That's what, why I was passing. Do do? Do do? I'm a brand manager for Wet n Wild and Black Radiance and Solo Parity Cosmetics in Nyack, New York. That sounded like Spanish. T-R-I-M-B-L-E. Uh, and by the way, mine is uh, S-T-E-R-N. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. Wait a second. We have a question from CNN. No, uh, no. Oh, extra. extra. Oh, extra. then ignore it. Uh, Go ahead. Lieutenant, um... What is, there are always people who are critical of the king of all media. What do you think this will do? Will it humanize Howard for people? Well, I think Howard has already been humanized many times over, but I think it uh, makes us aware that uh, when someone is in dire straits and in need of a psychological hand, they can at times uh, contact him and uh, receive a degree of support and help uh, that allowed us to do our job in responding and getting him uh, out of harm's way. Who better, to, who better to help someone who is psychologically disturbed than Howard Stern, who himself is psychologically disturbed? that are going to be calling you now? No, I don't believe I don't believe this man is a nut. Yeah, he was I despondent. Don't mean I believe but that. I mean crazies. That are I don't think crazies will be called. I think people who genuinely need help do call me from time to time, and uh, we've helped others. We've you helped have others. not been very vocal about the kind of work you do behind the scenes. And please, Robin, don't mention it public. here. Don't mention it here. All the Penny things I do. Penny thinks you do nothing. No, that is wrong. But I am too <laughs> humble to. Uh, now, to. What was the one thing you said? The one key thing you said. I'm from the Daily News. I want to know what you said exactly. You told about the, the movie. The, yeah. The when I. Moment that got Robin uh, knows this. She was part of the scene there. Uh, yeah. When I mentioned the fact that I had a movie coming out soon and that he would miss it if he died, it caused him to laugh, as you are here, but it also caused him to say, hey, wait a second, maybe I should stay around for the movie. So I think it was the, the comment about the movie. I must end the press conference now. I want to thank There's the one lieutenant. other thing that I wanted to point out to Penny and some of the other naysayers out there. There were times that were very nerve-wracking during that those few moments because he was on a cellular phone and we had a bad connection yes. and occasionally we thought we had lost him or that he had jumped what made you put the call through to begin with though uh, Gary came in and said he wasn't even sure he said there's a guy on the phone who says he's gonna kill himself now, I wasn't gonna hang up on the guy because if it was legitimate I wanted to make sure I was there for the guy uh, you know listen you guys ask me why is it this guy contacts Howard Stern it's simple you ever listen to the other jerks on the radio who would call them at least I have some uh, uh, pizzazz. I have some ability to keep people happy. You well, understand what I'm saying? You've got zookeepers and other uh, mutants on the air, and they, they God knows what they're talking about. What is it, Papa well, I just wanted to point out that we only showed the media a very small portion of the overall phone call, but Howard really did do a lot of work. The phone call itself is probably somewhere close to seven minutes long. We only showed you a minute and a half of are we it. Gonna get, are we all going to get copies? Or are you giving that exclusively to hard copy? No, I am giving it to everyone. <laughs> to everybody. Everybody who wants it. current affair wants that it. That is right. And two Whoever and wants it can have it because uh, I feel that as a member of the press, I must share. But you have to say that it, it does have to say courtesy of E on the bottom. Courtesy of E, that is correct. Okay? boost your image as a, as a good guy. Well, I, uh, I don't know. I always thought I you was a good guy. You didn't do it for that reason. That's right. I never did it for that reason. I never, I never helped this individual because I said in the back of my mind, this will help me to boost my image as a good guy. I did it because I care about humanity. Lieutenant <clears throat> Bleeker. Did, did I feel pressure? Of course. I was in the middle of saving a life. Uh, as the officer knows here, he has been in dangerous situations. When we go in to uh, save someone from a burning building, you, you feel pressure. But I, of course, withstood the, uh, the uh, pressure. Lieutenant Pleaker, can you take us through the process of how you first heard about the whole incident and what it was like when you got there? 
Well, oddly enough, we were, uh, I was rather, listening to uh, that portion of the Howard Stern show where a man identified himself as a possible uh, jumper on an unknown bridge at that particular time. It wasn't after uh, a few moments that we realized, based on the background noise and the uh, help from this young lady to uh, my right, that uh, bridge was indeed the George Washington Bridge and the calamity was a real one that required immediate intervention. And where were you at this time? I was responding to the uh, mid-span of the George Washington Bridge where we had identified the location of the subject. Where were you 